Hi there, Andrew here. I love to be entertained, but I have no patience, so I give every new show I watch only one episode to hook me. Welcome to Debut Review. I hate being that guy. You know, that guy. But sadly, this time, once again, I'm that guy. I'm that guy who didn't like Avatar, The Last Airbender. At least based on the first episode. And it's three seasons long, so lots of episodes. But yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't really dig the first episode. But uh, I know there are a lot of fans, so I sat through several more. I have seen the first five episodes of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, and sadly my opinion did not change. I remain that guy. <sighs> oh well. But hey! The Legend of Korra! Just hit Netflix. So, uh, if I don't like Avatar The Last Airbender, maybe I'll like Korra. On the other hand, I do know that uh, The Legend of Korra was not as popular with fans of the show. And, um, the folks who do like The Legend of Korra, from what I've heard, fairly, generally, feel that the first two of the four seasons are not great. Like, I even had someone recommend to me, say, uh, Korra's great, I love Korra, love the characters, love the story, but if you're gonna watch Korra, watch these episodes from season one, season two, and then just watch season three and four. Not the ringiest of ringing endorsements, but, um... Well, let's read the uh, show description. A female avatar who can control the elements fights to keep her city safe from the evil forces of both the physical and spiritual worlds. So, um... The Legend of Korra. Let's uh, check out the first episode and see what I think. Hmm. Wow. Um, okay. How do I put this? The Legend of Korra is, um, leagues better than Avatar The Last Airbender in every conceivable way. The snow looks like snow! <laughs> so, um... Not a bad first episode. Uh, it does start with some fairly major spoilers for the first series. So, um, uh, Aang and Zuko teamed up. So, he uh, went from heel to face. And uh, they ended the war. And uh, established a new happy place and it looks like uh the woman in the fan battalion from episode four was a member of their crew so that's cool um well it seems to be i don't know 60 some years later uh pretty much everyone's dead except kitara is that her name the waterbender from the first season uh ang's dead uh, most of the other characters are dead, but their children are around. And, um, they're on the lookout for the new Avatar, you see. Because, uh, Happy City just can't keep its shit together without the Avatar. It's fallen apart. I don't know what's wrong with the people of this world that they just can't 
stay off of each other's butts unless the avatar is avataring. But man, leave these suckers alone for one minute and stuff just goes to heck. So, um, the powers that be are searching the world for the new avatar, the reincarnation of the avatar. And it looks like they've been door to dooring it and they're kind of bored with this. And they go to the next door and they're like, oh no, <laughs> we've got the true avatar. And they're like, yeah, what makes you think your kid is the actual avatar? Well, she can bend water, earth, and fire. Oh. Oh. Here, honey. Come here and bend water, earth, and fire. Oh, look. She's bending water, earth, and fire. By gum, she is the Avatar. Okay. Uh, so, by age... When you first meet Cora, I don't know how old she's supposed to be. Six? I don't know. Eight? I don't know. But she's bending water, fire, and earth with the best of them, and now that she's... Sixteen? Uh, she wants to learn airbending. What have you been doing for the last ten years, Cora? Is that just a really hard one to pick up? Were you just naturally really good at uh, fire, earth, and water and just just couldn't pick up the airbending? Eh, I don't know. So, um, wow. The animation is significantly better. Uh, granted, this came out seven-ish years after the original, so yeah, that, I'm sure that has something to do with it. Avatar Last Airbender was quite popular. They may have had a larger budget, but whew, this is much nicer looking. As I mentioned, the snow looks like snow, which is something the original series struggled with. Um, I still like the, uh, the design, uh, the character design and the world design. I still think that's very attractive. Um, that was never a problem with the original series. Um, but, uh, yeah, the animation, the character art, uh, one of the issues the first, uh, at least the early episodes of the first series had is, uh, characters didn't look good if they got any further from, like, than, like, medium distance from the camera. This show does a lot better at that. Um, it still has exaggerated facial expressions that I find a bit off-putting, but nowhere near, nowhere near as obnoxious as The Last Airbender. Uh, it still keeps that exaggerated style without triggering the gag reflex, so that's appreciated. Uh, the choreography for the various fights and bending is uh, still really strong. I, I really appreciate that the various bending styles have their own really distinct form. Uh, that's, that's a nice touch that I appreciated in the first series. Uh, the music is really nice. I did not like the music in the first series. I think the music here is very nice. Um, the characters and the plot are much more interesting, and uh, I'm, of course, comparing episode number one with the first five episodes of the last series, but so far I, I found this plot that they're heading towards here much more compelling than what they were offering in the uh, first series. So, good on them there. <clears throat> so, uh, Korra is training to become the Avatar because Republic City, or whatever its name is. Yes, it's written right there. Welcome to Republic City is the name of the first episode, so it's, yeah, it's Republic City. Boy, they thought long and hard for that name, didn't they? Uh, so she wants to learn airbending. Uh, Daddy Airbender comes and he says, Hey, I gotta go home. It's like... You flew all the way to the South Pole to tell us you couldn't... St do, do we not have phones? I, I guess we don't have phones. And... Yeah. And maybe some fucking asshole destroyed the postal service, so, you know, maybe he had to, had to come himself. You know, that could happen. But he shows up and he says, hey, I gotta go. Bye! Can't train you. 
And she says, well, I, I, I guess I'll just go back to Republic City with you. And he says, no. And the other people, they say, say no. And she says, well, I say yes. And Grandma K, K Katara, what, what was her name? Yeah. She says, yeah, it's, it's your destiny. You know, get, get on your polar bear dog and go. And I, I was thinking, are, are they going to swim all the way to Republic City? No, no they, they, they hitch a ride on a boat, so it's cool. Um, so they get there, and, um, yeah, things aren't great in the city. Uh, there are some people complaining that benders are oppressing the non-benders. Don't know if that's true, but um, there's at least... 12 people who, or one person who believes that, and a dozen people who are listening to him. And there's some bad guys who are, like, shaking down small businesses for, you know, the, the whole protection racket. You know, give us money, be a shame if anything happened to your shop. So Cora beats the snot out of him, ends up wrecking half the street in the process, and gets arrested by the police force, which are run by, get this, Metal benders. Do they bend metal? I... They seem to just have kind of that uh, equipment that the characters in Attack on Titan have with the... with with the little belts that fire grapples in the walls so that they can swing between trees. They've kind of got that gear. I don't know if there's any bending going on there. And wouldn't a metal bender just be an earth bender? Again, I'd, I only watched the first five episodes. I, I, I don't know the rules. Um, but uh, Daddy Airbender says, ah, you know what? <sighs> Republic C City's fallen on its butt because there's no Avatar and you're an Avatar. So I'll teach you some airbending and somehow maybe that will make the city be behave. So she starts in on a press conference, and I'm the Avatar, I'm here for you, I serve you. And they're like, hey, are you going to fight crime? Are you going to do this? She's like, you know what, I have not thought this through, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm thinking, did she just steal some microphones and just get in front of people? And then the camera pans out, and the, the pol chief of police and daddy airbender are there. And No, apparently this was a press conference that they called and let her speak at, that seems like a bad idea, but, oh well. So, um, am I going to watch more of The Legend of Korra? No, probably not. Um, it's fine, but I wasn't like, oh man, I need to see more. But, it's fine. It's, uh, in my estimation, the first episode at least, a lot better than the opening of uh, Last Airbender, um, uh, both technically, uh, storytelling-wise, um, character-wise. I, I actually find the, the, the characters much more interesting in this. I did not connect with any of the characters in the uh, first five episodes of the original series. Uh, didn't really care about them, wasn't looking forward to hanging out with these people and seeing them interact with each other just this just wasn't uh one feeling it but uh this one seems to be uh have a foot on that path at least so uh uh maybe it's a strong start start and it just falls apart after this because again i i've heard some less than positive things about legend of Korra, but uh yeah uh this 30 minutes or what? Well, it's like 24 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, found it an easy sit, entertaining enough. Uh, didn't grab me, didn't say, hey, you must watch more, but uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs>